Africa. Hi, welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I am Miguel Favre, Communications Officer within the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport. And with me today is Mr. Shanger, the Chief Electrical Engineer in the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport. Mr. Shanger, this welcome. And this is our second time meeting today, me meeting on this, this program. Uh, the first time we spoke, we spoke about the street lights, the traffic lights on St. Lucia and some of the issues that we're facing, whether it be driver error and the whole operation of the traffic lights. But today we're here to discuss a different type of lighting, and that is a street lighting project which is ongoing um, on St. Lucia. So once again, welcome Mr. Je, and welcome to Issues and Answers. Yeah, thank you very much, Miguel. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Uh, before we get into the ongoing project, uh, Shane, let's just speak to the process by which uh, we apply for street lights in a particular area. Well, as you know, there are many places in St. Lucia where, where you find that there are street lights that are, are missing. Where basically you find that there, there are the areas of darkness in St. Lucia. Now, when situations like that arise, usually they, they are brought to our attention by the general public, right? And they are. There are, uh, uh, there are multiple ways that they can do that. First of all, right, they can, they can simply come into our offices. There, there is a, a, a form there that they, they can just fill out, right? Obviously, that form must have a certain information, for example, the area, a contact number if we have to reach the person, and, most imp and very importantly, a poll number. Also, there's a second way that they can also do it. There is a, a, an email address electricalcomplaints.govt.lc, right? That they can also send, the, that's the same information that they would have, they would have placed on, the, on, the, on, that pay, on that form in our offices. They can just send us an email with all the necessary information. Now, in a situation where a street light is existing but isn't working, right? They can also go to kled.lc, and, and there is a map there. If on that map they can locate the street light, they can just click on it. And and basically, this, by clicking on it, it's going to inform us that there is a fault on the street light, whether it is not working, it is flashing, or whatever it is. We'll get that information, and then we can, we can address whatever, whatever, has to be, whatever needs to be addressed. Okay, let's just get that, that address once again, so maybe we could have it on screen. It's complaints. Electrical.complaints at govt.lc. Electrical.complaints at govt.lc. Yes. Now, you didn't mention KLED. Let's just get to that web address again. KLED.LC. KLED but the latter, the latter day is for situations where there is a light, right? Mm -hmm. But the light is faulty. Whether it is you, the light is there, it's not working, or it's flashing, or it's, it's um, basically it's, it's blinking, as people <laughs> prefer to call it. In a situation like that, they can just go to KLED.LC. If they can locate that light on the map, there is a map there. If they can locate the light on the map, they just click on it. And by clicking on it, it's going to send us a fault report. And then we can address whatever issue that it has. And KLE, obviously, is the company that's currently undergoing... Engaged, yeah. The company that is currently engaged in, um, in, on, in um, executing the, the street light retrofit project. Okay. Are there situations where um, a request for a street light may not be approved by the Ministry of Infrastructure? Lucia? Yeah, this is. Yeah, we have had situations where, where we have we have had to, to, to reject certain applications for, for, for street lighting. But that's, this 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 happens on, on very rare occasions, right? You find that on some occasions, right? If we f if we if we if we receive an application for a street light, right, uh, especially a new street light, and we go to the area. Right? And we find that there are street lights there already that are existing. And the primary purpose right, of this application is to light up somebody's, let's say, somebody's backyard. Right? We, we, will, we most likely, on some, on some occasions, we, we are going to reject some, such, a, such an application. Because as the name suggests, right, street lights is for the street, right? And not necessarily to light up somebody's for backyard. For public infrastructure. For public public road infrastructure. infrastructure, exactly. 
um, you, you said that, uh, so you're saying that there are people who may request for their backyard. How do we get many of those requests for, for personal lighting? It is, it is not a lot, but you, might, you, you, you find it on some occasions. For example, I'll, give you an, I'll, 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 I'll elaborate on something there. There are places in St. Lucia, right, where you go to, right, and you find that there is a track or a road, right, and obviously that light, and there's a pool right next to that track or road. And there is a, a, a house next to that track. Now, obviously, logically, logic dictates that the light should be facing the track, should be right above the track, right? But for some strange reason, on some occasions, right, it is, it is not on the track. It's facing the opposite direction, okay. shining into somebody's yard. You understand? And on many occasions, the, the track itself is left in, in darkness. Now, situations like that, right, if it's a situation where somebody applies for a street light and we can, we, 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 what we try to do is to try to have that street light directed towards the street, right? So therefore, the street light should be illuminating the street mm -hmm. and not the other direction, right? Where it's, there, it's illuminating, illuminating somebody's backyard. Okay. Now, speaking of illumination, we're going to move, segue right into our ongoing project, which uh, commenced in August of 2023, and that is the street light uh, replacement uh, project. Uh, where, without having to say too much about it before you give your information, where we are replacing the high-pressure sodium uh, lights with LED lights. Can you just brief us on the background of the project and where we are now? Well, to be honest with you, for, for our purposes here, we're simply going to refer to it as um, the streetlight retrofit project. Now, obviously, this is, not, this is not all that's happening under this project. Obviously, as you know, we're also installing new lights and not just replacing now, this project started in earnest, although sometime in 2001, we had already about 800, over 800 lights had already been installed in, two, in two, 2000, two, 2021, That's sorry. LED. LED lights mm -hmm. had already been installed, or the same, the same, the same, the same kind, the same, the same type. However, in earnest, that project started in late, in late August. Mm -hmm. And to date, we have installed over 16,000 lights. Now, th this is a process that is very fluid and is ongoing. So to date, we have installed over 16,000 lights. Um, basically, we're replacing, along the highways in St. Lucia, we are replacing 250 right, high-pressure sodium lamps with 75 watt KLED, or should I say LED lights. So just to clarify, 250 watt. 250 watt. What high-pressure sodium. High-pressure sodium lights, yeah, with, with 75 watt LED lights. And in the inner communities, or the second, what we what we what we um, call the, the secondary roads, we are replacing 70 watt high pressure sodium lights with 21 watt LED lights. Okay. As a layman, though, um, I would ask you, what is the the difference, or maybe the savings um, in terms of usage uh, between the 250 250 watt uh, high pressure sodium and the 75 watt LED? Okay, I want you to think about it in that way. What is the, t the typical wattage of an iron at home? It's about, uh, I'll say about uh, 1.5 kilowatts, about 1,500 1, 1, watts, mm -hmm. right? Now, along the highways, with the high-pressure sodium, with the high-pressure sodium 250 watt lights, right? You're looking at there about six of these already, right? Six, only six of these lights would equate to like an iron left for, tw for 12 hours per day, mm -hmm. right? So therefore you get the picture already. So replacing that with a 75 watt light, right? Which mean, with a 75 watt LED light, which mean, means that the, the, we, we get save, which is, the savings is basically threefold. Additionally, with high pressure sodium lights, right? We have, we have a situation where you can only basically get these lights to, to, that's the reason, as a matter of fact, that's the reason why they are called yellow lights, right? Because these lights basically are yellow. Now, the, 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 this may not seem like a problem, but actually it is, because with these lights, right, it is more difficult in the night to tell the real color of an object that, is, that these lights are illuminating. Mm -hmm. However, with LED lights, right, and the temp, the, the pres we, we are presently with the temperature of the lights we, we have, we are installing is about 5,000 key, right? These are more daylight. Mm -hmm. Now, with these lights, right, they are better for security in that, right? You can, you, it, basically, if, if, an, if an, orange, an orange object appears beneath lights like that, then you see the real color orange. 
However, with these high pressure sodium lights, right, because of the fact that they are yellow, it is more difficult to make out the true color of an object. It is, it is illuminated. Okay, so a blue item may appear green because of a exactly. mix of the yellow night. Okay, now that said, moving, in, moving from there, uh, since we embarked on that project, in fact, before we even go into that, can you just tell us where we are in terms of how many lights we have on island and how many lights we've replaced so far and the percentage as it is? Okay, so on island we have between 22,000 and 23,000 street lights, right? Along the highways, you have about close to 4,000 lights. So therefore, initially, before the, the project even started, we had about roughly, roughly 3,000, over 3,500 of these 200 of, a two, of these 250 watt LED lights, right? And obviously the remainder would be these 70, these 70 watt lights, right? Now, as I said earlier on, to date we've replaced over 16,000 of them. We're talking there about, of about 2,500, we've, we've retrofitted so far, about 2,500 um, 75 watt lights, which means that we've replaced the 250 watt mm -hmm. high pressure sodium lights. And obviously, the remainder will be the 21 watt lights, which, which, which we have replaced. Now, that is the first phase of the project. Huh? So basically, the first phase of the project is just a straight swap. So basically, replacing the 250 watt with the 75 and replacing the 70 watt with the 21. In the second phase of the project, that is when we are going to start installing new lights. Okay. Now, when do we expect to finish with this first phase of the project? That first phase of the project, hopefully, we're going to, we're going to, that first phase of the project will come to an end. I'm almost certain that it's going to come to an end by the end of the month, by the end of January End of January 2024. Yes. Okay, now the second phase. Um, the second phase is important because since we embarked on this project, we've got numerous complaints, whether it be for talk shows, uh, people coming into the ministry, which has been a, a very increasing over, over the past few months, coming into the ministry, particularly the electrical department, uh, regarding the illumination and how much illumination they get from the new lights as opposed to the high pressure sodium. Can we speak to that issue? They're saying that the, the LEDs are not as bright as the high pressure sodium. What? Well, to be honest with you, I wouldn't describe the LEDs as not being as bright. Here's the issue. You see, with high pressure sodium lamps, right, what they tend to do is to project light outwards at a 360 degree angle. So therefore, with high pressure sodium lights, you get, when you have a high pressure sodium light at a particular, at a particular location, especially at the height at which they're installed, they project light all around. However, that is not the case with LED lights. With LED lights, the angle of illumination you're going to have is about 180 degrees. So which means that these lights are more directional, right? Now, dark spots in St. Lucia have always existed. However, they, they won't, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, um, the fact that um, LED lights are more directional, these dark spots are now more pronounced, right? Now, in the second phase of the project, what we intend to do is to treat these dark spots. So in, you find that in, in, in certain situations, you find that <clears throat> there, are, there are dark spots that are usually brought about either by, um, a corner being between two poles that are illuminated, or secondly, you find that they, on some occasions that um, the poles are distant, so therefore you find a dark spot in between them. Now we are going to address all these situations when they arise. Okay. So that would involve bas basically installing of new poles where it is necessary, okay. right? Or in basically putting a, a light where where it, it basically put in a light between two lights that are, are, exist presently. Okay, we're about to head into a break, but we will continue this discussion as it relates to the dark spots when we come back. Uh, you are watching Issues and Answers. Um, Miguel Favre, the Infrastructure, Ports and Transport, the Department of Infrastructure, Ports, Ports and Transport Communications Officer, and with me is Mr. Shane Zhe, the Chief Electrical Engineer at the DIPT. We'll be back in a minute. Hello, OECS. Yo, OECS, this is your ocean. If I am to protect your future, we have to work together. It's the time to work together. If I am to help protect your future. Once I used to be so pure and clean, and those hills were so fresh and green. But now you see me as your dumping ground. Situations has me choking on your pollution. Think hard about it, you will agree that really there is no you without me. Make the zero waste pledge be responsible, reduce your waste. 
Cycle OECS, green actions, blue oceans. Welcome back to Issues and Answers with me, Miguel Favrier, the Communications Officer within the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport. And again with me is Mr. Shanger, the Chief Electrical Engineer. And we're just going to pick up from where we left off as it relates to addressing those dark spots following the replacement of those high-pressure sodium lights with LEDs. And just to reiterate, how are we going to address those dark spots which currently exist following the in installation of those lights? Yeah, so I was, I was saying basically, these dark spots, they've always existed. However, it's a situation where they are more pronounced now that we've installed LED lights that are more directional. Right? And we intend, to dis we intend to address these dark spots by putting up additional LED lights, right? Where, 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 these, where these spots arise, right? But I've also heard concerns where people are saying that, then why is it that we are, we are removing a light, a high-pressure sodium light, right? Which basically gives light at a 360-degree angle and replacing them with lower wattage LED lights when we do know that we're going to have to install more, right? I'd like to address this point by simply saying that we are comparing here, right, a 70 watt light, a 70 watt high pressure sodium light, right, to a 21 watt okay. LED light. And we are also comparing a 250 watt high pressure sodium light to a, a 75 watt LED light. So even if we are to double the number of lights, we, we have in St. Lucia, we we'll still, we would still, we would still find ourselves in a situation where it's about sixty percent the usage of one exactly. of one light. Exactly. Yeah. So therefore, we we'll still find ourselves in a situation where the savings would be enormous, both in, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions and of obviously financially. Additionally, we have other issues with high-pressure sodium lights. Also, these are things. These are lights that that, that um, generally the world is trying to get rid of for si for the simple reason that. They contain toxic, harmful substances, and especially we're talking there of, of mercury. Because you have to understand how these lights work. Basically, these are discharge lamps, these are discharge lights, and as the name suggests, right? These are, these are um, um, where basically you find that, you find sodium in a gas state mixed with, um, or should I say amalgamated with, with, okay. um, with mercury. mercury yeah. So therefore, these, all these, these, these discharge lamps from the, from the fluorescent you use at home too, the high pressure sodium light you find under all these things contain toxic sub substances, unlike the LEDs that we are, we are installing. Okay, um, in terms of the percentage, or maybe you could give a, a figure, an actual figure, how many more lights do we intend to install following this first phase of the project? Um, we, in we intend to install, after the initial phase of the, the project, as I said, we're going to start, in we're going to begin the, in the, co the installation of, as a matter of fact, we have started in certain parts of the country, in certain certain areas. For example, along the, along the highway between Denry and Viewfort, we have already commenced the installation of, of new lighting along that area, also in the, in the, in the Grozilly area. And um, we intend to install an additional, let's say, 2,000 lights to address the situations with the dark spots. And we believe, based on the, 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 the complaints that we've, we, we have received, we believe that that is going to be sufficient to address all the dark spots that we have on island, but obviously we have the lights in storage. So as the need arises, we're going to ad address them as the complaints come along. Okay, so members of the public, obviously, once we fall, once we've done with this second phase, um, if there are any areas, areas where dark spots are in the, are located, we are going to address this. All they need to do is come to the ministry, file a complaint, fill up, fill up or, or the same email address that I mentioned at the beginning, electrical .complaints at govt.lc. I, I think it's important to note that this, this second phase, um, it involves our, our staff and the KLE, our contractors working at night just to have to observe those spots. And to, so it's not just a process of, we figure that it's, there may not be sufficient light. We actually go on site at night. Exactly. After hours. Here's what happens, right? We have our personnel, we have our personnel on the ground. So therefore, what usually happens, after lights have been retrofitted in a particular area, Right? When the sun sets, 
these people, they go, these, these, these hard-working individuals, what they do, they, they, they drive through the area and take note as to where all the dark spots are. Okay. So most of the dark spots that, that we are receiving, most of the, the, the complaints concerning dark spots we are receiving, we are already aware, aware of them. Of and them. as I said, we are going to address them. Okay. Before we get to the next point on that, Aki, we haven't spoken about the savings that we've been able to amass so far since we, we started this project in August. Can you speak to that? Okay. Well, as I mentioned earlier on, right, we've installed so far about 16,000 lights. However, we have not, we have not, um, um, what we, the, the, last, the last calculations we have, right, are for the, the period, it's for the period basically ending 31st December mm -hmm. 20, 2023. And the, based on the last figures that I have, right, we had in, we, we were, we are realizing a saving of um, $377,000 on a monthly basis. That's a little, that's well, over a quarter million dollars a month. Absolutely. So we're looking at in, in, in two months, three months, in three months we can save a million dollars. So basically we're looking there as, at, um, as we, we continue replacing these um, um, high pressure sodium lamps, mm -hmm. right? The, the save, we're going to continue gradually be seen an increase in the savings. Wow. I'm trying to do the calculations in my head. If you look at 350 grand uh, by two months, that's 700,000 already. Absolutely. So, so for four months, it's 1.4 million. Absolutely. Wow. That's, and multiply four by three. <laughs> <laughs> four, three is 12. So, well, so we, have, we have about it's five, six but million dollars saved a year. On, it is not just um, financial, right? The mm -hmm. savings are not just financial. Because as we know right now, we also, we also, we also have certain goals in St. Lucia, right? Mm -hmm. Certain, um, 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 a sustainable development goals, goals that we do are exactly we that signed which, on to exactly which involve the reduction of greenhouse gases mm -hmm. and so on and so forth let me give you a, a typical example right street lighting right for a country like saint lucia which i do not consider which, which cannot be considered metropolitan in any way Far right from. street lighting accounts for about 10 percent of total energy consumption in saint lucia now this does not seem like like a lot in a in a in a in 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 um, metropolitan, has to pay metropolitan for it, a lot, countries, eh? right? Uh -huh. That may not, it may not seem like it, but for a country like St. Lucia, that is quite a bit. When the government has to pay for it, it's a lot. Eh? We could be using that money for other means, our security and exactly. all that matter. Now, another issue, and of course, part of this job is paying attention to the talk shows and social media and all the criticisms that come our way as a Department of Infrastructure. And one of the suggestions or the, the questions is, why have we not gone solar, gone LED instead of skipping it? Why have we not skipped the LED part and just gone solar, which it is believed would, would save us more um, in the long run over time? Um, any reason why we have not chosen the solar aspect, solar lighting, as opposed to LEDs? You see, presently, as it stands, right, solar, light, so, um, solar lighting is, is, is a very good idea. But it, it, is more, it, is more, it is something that you would look at or you would implement if you're looking at smaller scale projects. Because what we do have to understand is that with solar energy, street lights don't work during the day, right? So basically when the sun is out, you don't need these street lights. You need these street lights during the night. So basically you need these street lights when the sun is not up. So the question to ask yourself is, you have to capture this, this solar energy during the day, right? And release them at night. So therefore, you have to store them in batteries. Batteries are not cheap. So basically, it speaks to the, the, the high initial investment involved right, in, um, in, in the installation of solar lights. Because you're not just looking at the light there. The most important part of it is the storage, the storage component, basically, which is the batteries. The batteries are not cheap. Secondly, right, solar lights, they do have the disadvantage. It is not an uncommon thing in St. Lucia for the sun to not be fully out. Right, for a period, for, for, for weeks at a time, especially when you're coming towards the end of the year, like September, October, where the days start getting shorter, right? And you might find that there are weeks sometimes for, for, for elongated periods, periods of time. This, yeah, the sign comes out, but it's always been for cloud. Now, to get a, 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 a battery fully, fully charged, right, you, you, you require a situation where, where you need a certain amount of, um, of, um, Solar power. Or solar power to mm -hmm. be hitting that solar panel, mm -hmm. right? Are we going to, to, be, to achieve this thing? Are we going to keep that, are we, be, are we going to be keeping that battery charge to the level required, right? To give us light every night when the sun is not fully out? I don't think so. Okay. As opposed to... So you might find it a situation, you might find 
that you, you come across a situation where during the, 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 what we refer to as the summer, the, the dry season, right? These lights are working perfectly. However, during the rainy season, when the, light, the sun is out a bit less, right? That there are certain nights right, where you would have lights, light in, street lights in St. Lucia at all. Unless, of course, you, you choose to go for a, a hybrid process. A hybrid, hybrid yes. A, a hybrid system that uses both um, electricity and um, solar. But as I mentioned earlier on, the initial cost, the initial investment involved in installing solar lights, right? With the battery, where, where you have the battery component, ex um, um, you have the battery component which also exists, is not a cheap investment. Okay, and the summer months are also the rainy months as well. Eh? And with climate change now, we really can't tell when we're going to get sun, when we're going to get rain. Absolutely. Okay, um, more or less to, to end this, this discussion, uh, we have another component uh, with the street lighting project, and that is the installation of new lights, which we spoke of regard in certain areas. And there are areas where we need to uh, install low tension lines. Can you tell us more about that? Okay. So you find that there are certain areas in St. Lucia where we've never had street lights. So basically, we've never had, we've, we've never had um, um, high pressure sodium lights there. We've never had LED. We've never, so I can mention a few of them, right? There's the, there's the Windward Road in, um, in Cap Estate. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's also a large section between um, Belvedere Canaries and, um, and um, Kachime, that's near, that's near Kachime. And you would know that's, that's, that's your area, so you Absolutely. travel there often. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm aware of these, that these areas, these, these, that area exists. And also there, there, as we go around island, right, during, during, that, that, um, during, the, during the, the implementation of super, should I say, supervision of that project, we also notice that the other small sections in St. Lucia where there are no street lights. And the reason why all these areas do not have street lights is because there's no low tension. You see, um, electricity in St. Lucia is transmitted at 66,000 volts. Now, that's not very important for, for, that, for this purpose. They are distributed as 11 kV. So therefore, although you may see poles in that area, and you may see these, these lines running, right? these lines traversing the, the island, some of them may be at, and these, in, these, in these areas I'm talking about, there, especially um, the wind, not, not the wind road, the Belvedere. along the West Coast Road, West Coast road, there, road right? Yeah. You have the 11 kV line that traverses the island, right? That, that area of St. Lucia. However, street lights operate at 240 volts. And that's what we refer to as low tension. So 11 kV is high, high tension. tension. Okay. The 240 volts required by these lights do not exist presently, right? So for them, to, for, 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 to, to deal with that situation, we've been in conversation with Lucilec, right? And the intention is to have Lucilec install low tension in all these areas so that we can have the energy required, the, the electricity required to energize, energize this light. So as soon as that, that, part of, of, um, that part of the project is done, street lights are going to be popping up in, in the Wind Road Road, as I mentioned, and also, also the, the Belvide Kachime area. Okay. And all, as I mentioned, there are all the little areas in St. Lucia also that are like that. All of, them are, all, of the, all of them are going to be addressed. Okay. All right. We have just about two minutes to go, but just from a layman's perspective for clarification, the 11 kV lines, which are the high tension, what exactly are they used for to power? Uh, what do they power? Or, or can you just let us know? Uh, um, you see, I think the, pr the appropriate question is why, why do we have high tension at all? <laughs> Now, obviously, that has very little to do with street lighting. I, think, I still believe that um, it should be explained. Um, you see, it is better to transmit electricity, right, over large distances at higher voltage and lower currents. I would believe that the further it goes, the less, the less current or the, the the less voltage you have. The less loss you have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, that's the reason of these, high, these high, high tension lines. Now, obviously, because they cannot be utilized, right, most equipment, you find most equipment, or three phase equipment will be at 415. Single phase equipment will be at, at, um, at 240, right? So basically, you need electricity in your home, right, at 240, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to take that, 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 sub, that, trans, that distribution line now at 11 kV, right, and reduce it via transformer to 240, and then, and then distribute it right, over short distances, right, to residential buildings okay. at 240. 
I think we've covered basically everything <laughs> regarding the street lights for today, but I think there's more we have to discuss in, in future. This guy, I'm talking about even wiring for homes, um, certain things that our people, that residents would have Absolutely. to look to and, and things that they need, to know. To see on that. they need to know. But Shane, once again, it's, it's wonderful having you here. I think it's very, very enlightening for me, and I hope the public can get it. Can, can get some of what I, I was able to pick out. I'm sure they did. Uh, you explained very, very skillfully. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us here for Issues and Answers. I am Miguel Favre, Communications Officer within the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport. And with me was Mr. Shane Zhe, the Chief Electrical Engineer. This is our second discussion, and I'm sure there will be many more to come. Like I said, we have other things to discuss as it relates to electricity on island and your houses and wiring and everything. But for now, We'll say goodbye and see you soon. Thanks for tuning in to Issues and Answers.